everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I am bringing you a massive April wrap up. So throughout the month of April, I read a lot more than I thought that I was going to. I it was really, really successful in the first half of the month. The second half of the month, I got a little bit more into TV and movies, but I still wound up finishing 18 books in the month of April, which is a total record for me. I still have no idea how I did that, but today we're going to be talking about all of them. I will say first, if you have not seen my mid month wrap up for the month of April, you're definitely going to want to go and watch that because in that video, I talk about eight of the books that I read in the first couple weeks of the month and I'm not going to go in depth about those books here. We have enough to talk about as it is so I will leave a link to my mid-April wrap-up in a card up above if you haven't seen it already. But in my end of the month wrap-ups I always really quickly go over the books that are in my mid-month wrap-up, tell you my ratings, then I give you stats for everything that I've read throughout the month and then continue on with the books I haven't yet reviewed. So we're going to get into that but before we get into today's video if you're new here and you're not already please be sure to go down and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content and without further ado let's get started. So now I'm going to go into some stats. These stats do encompass every single thing that I read throughout the month of April so all 18 books are represented here. So let's start out with Source. This is the actual place that I got these books from and only one book this month came from my physical library and by far my biggest category was Libby. I got 10 out of the 18 books that I read this month through the Libby app. I did read two books this month on Scribd and two of them came from my actual bookshelf. I also had three arcs this month. One came from NetGalley and two came from Edelweiss. As far as the format, I read seven ebooks this month, three physical books, and eight audiobooks. For age range, I did not read in a middle grade this month, and I read eight YA. I read one new adult and nine adult. As far as genres, we were a little bit all over the place, but as per usual, the biggest genre I read this month was contemporary with six. I also read four historical fiction and four fantasy, three nonfiction, and one graphic novel. And then as far as ratings go, again, we were a bit all over the place. I did give my lowest rating of the year so far. I had one 1.5 star book, one 2 star and one 2.5 star, one 3.5 star and eight 4 star books, four 4.5 stars and two 5 stars. So I'm going to really quickly tell you the books that I already talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Again, be sure to go watch that if you want more in-depth reviews. But the first book that I finished in the month of April was The Conference of the Birds by Ransom Riggs, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. I Am Here Now by Barbara Botner, which which I gave a 2 out of 5 stars. Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. In 5 Years by Rebecca Searle, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And The End of Your Life Book Club by Will Schwalbe, which I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So after I finished The End of Your Life Book Club, I jumped into The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han, and this is the first book in the Summer Trilogy. This was Jenny Han's debut. Now this book follows our main character, Belly, and every summer she and her family go to this old summer house, this lake house that they have, and this is essentially your quintessential summer romance. Belly has been going to this house ever since she was a little kid and she's really close to the family the next door and their three brothers that are in the family. They have grown up together and all of the sudden Belly has kind of come into her own and the boys are starting to notice her more and she's starting to notice them. So it is a little bit younger on the YA spectrum but it is just your quintessential summer read. Now, like I said, I do think that this book is more suited for the younger end of YA. Belly, our main character, actually turns 16 in the middle of the novel, so that kind of gives you an idea of the age range that we're looking at. And as a 25-year-old woman, you don't think that I would enjoy that, but I really, really loved this one. I thought that Jenny Han did a really good job of making sure that the characters acted true to their age. So yeah, at times, Belly and the other characters did some things and said some things and thought some things that I did not agree with, but it was realistic to how you would would feel as a 15 or 16 year old. So I really appreciated the way that that was done. Now again, this book was slightly cheesy, but in the best way possible. I really, really enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I loved All the Boys I've Loved Before by the same author, and I thought that this one wouldn't measure up, but I'm so happy to say that it did. Now, this was my first time reading this book, but it just made me feel nostalgic for that kid summer, that just the perfect picture of that. It was adorable, the perfect summer read, and it was very, very short. This is less 
than 300 pages long and I got it through Scribd. So if you live in the US, you can probably get it on Scribd if you're interested. It was quick. It was fun. I'll probably be continuing the trilogy throughout the summer. I wound up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So the next book that I completed in the month of April was The Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett. Now this is the first book to Terry Pratchett's famous Discworld series universe and Terry Pratchett was one of the big names in fantasy and the Discworld series universe this book in particular is some of the most well acclaimed books in the fantasy genre. Now this book actually follows our two main characters, Two Flower and Rincewind. And Rincewind lives in Discworld and Two Flower is a tourist. So Rincewind is trying to show him around and they get into a whole bunch of shenanigans. This book gave me vibes of like Princess Bride and Monty Python is kind of how I pictured it. And it, it just feels really like a parody fantasy. And I enjoyed it, even though that is completely something that is outside of my comfort zone. I really didn't know what this was going to be about going into it. The reason I picked it up initially was for a challenge to read the first book in a series that has 20 or more books. So I really kind of went into this one blind and I found myself enjoying it, but it is definitely outside of my comfort zone. This one did take me a little while to get into, and I think just because I'm not as familiar with the genre, but if you are a big fantasy reader and you're looking for something like that a little on the lighter side of fantasy. If you haven't picked this one up yet I might recommend it. It was a very quick read so if you are interested at all I would recommend going ahead and picking it up and then worse comes to worse if you don't enjoy it at least you didn't waste that much of your time. I want to be giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I completed was a reread for me and that was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. Now this book is a fairy centered Beauty and the Beast retelling and we follow our main character Feyre who one day goes into the woods to hunt for her family and she she accidentally kills a fairy and Feyre winds up getting taken from her family because she unknowingly broke this treaty between the humans and the fairies and so she is sent to live among the fairies to pay out her life of debt and chaos ensues from there. I really really enjoyed this book the second time around. I really did not remember a whole lot about it and I it was almost like reading it for the first time getting to experience it again which I really enjoyed. The first time that I read it was physically. This time around I listened to it on audio which is something that I would not normally do because normally I cannot concentrate on fantasy through audio. I just find myself getting lost. But since I had read this one already and I slowed it down lower than I would usually listen to an audiobook, I was able to follow and really, really enjoy the story. I just feel like Sarah J. Mass is just an incredible storyteller in general. She has some badass characters. Favorite in this book at times really reminds me of Selena from Throne of Glass. So I just loved this one overall. I read this one in preparation for A Court of Mist and Fury, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but really, really enjoyed this one and I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I completed was Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. Now, this is actually a graphic novel, but I completed it on audio, so I didn't get to see the graphics that go along with it, but before I even talk about the plot, I will say this is one of the most well-produced audiobooks that I have ever listened to. You have a full cast of incredible narrators. Some of my favorite audiobook narrators of all time are in this book, namely January Lavoie. I adore her and she is in this book and there are so many sound effects and just they just made a total production out of this and it was incredible. I definitely want to pick it up in physical form to look at the drawings but just regardless the audiobook was fantastic. But this book follows our main character Nimona and Nimona is a shapeshifter and, and at the beginning of the novel she approaches Lord Ballister Blackheart who is a super villain and Nimona essentially says I want to be your intern. I want to be your sidekick. I want to help you do evil things and they form this partnership and they start to go wreak havoc on the universe. This was such a fun time and it was so short and quick and easy to get through. I think the audiobook was only like two hours long. It was amazing. It was so cute and I, have n I don't think I've ever read anything with a shapeshifter before or it would have been a long long time ago but like I said even not getting to see the graphics in this graphic novel it was still really easy to follow and definitely enjoyable. So if you need a graphic novel in your life this is definitely one that I'd recommend if you haven't picked it up already. I wound up giving this one a four out of five stars. The next book that I completed was Night Owls and Summer Skies by Rebecca Sullivan. This one is an arc that I received on NetGalley so thank you to NetGalley and the author and publisher for providing me with a copy in exchange for an honest review. And this book is expected to be published on June 30th. 
Now this book follows our main character, Emma, and at the beginning of the novel, Emma's father drops her off with her mother for the summer, and she thinks that they're going to be able to spend the whole summer together, but her mother has different plans in mind. Her mother has just recently gotten married and has dropped Emma off at this summer camp called Camp Maplewood. Emma went there when she was younger and has not been back for years and years and years, and Emma's mom just unceremoniously dumps her there and says, I'm gonna go on a month-long honeymoon with my new husband. See you later. And Emma is left to relive her past nightmares at this camp. She left because this really traumatic thing happened to her there and she doesn't want to be there, but now she has no choice and it is just, it's a clusterfuck. <laughs> so I thought that the premise of this was going to be so cute and fun and just like a summer kind of coming of age. There is a female-female romance in here, which is something that I was interested in reading about. But to be completely honest, this book was a hot mess. I could not really get behind any of the characters. There are obvious characters in here that you are not supposed to root for and I didn't, so good on the author there, but I also didn't root for the characters that I was supposed to like. I didn't feel like any of the relationships, romantic or platonic, were very believable. And I feel like a lot of the characters were very, very surface level. We did not really learn anything about them throughout the entirety of the novel. So I didn't feel like I cared about them or in was invested in their relationships. Now, the one thing that I will say that I enjoyed is the relationship between Emma and her father. I feel like they had a very good, solid, healthy relationship, especially when it comes to Emma's sexuality. Emma's sexuality is pretty much dismissed by her mother through the entirety of the novel, and I did enjoy the way that Emma's character wound up handling that, and I liked the way that her father just handled that in general. So that is the one place that kind of redeemed this book, but the rest of it, I unfortunately don't have a lot of good things to say about it. I I will say, however, that the publication date on this novel actually got pushed back. It was initially supposed to be published in May and now it's not going to be published until the end of June. So it could be that there are going to be some last minute tweaks made that might change some of the things that I didn't care for in the novel. But the way that I read it, those are my thoughts. I wound up giving this one a 1.5 out of 5 stars. So the next book that I completed in the month of April was 112263 by Stephen King. So this book follows our main character, Jake. And there is a diner in town owned by a man named Al. Well, Al starts talking to Jake and tells him that he has a portal in the back of his diner that will take him back to the year 1958. And this eventually turns into Al and Jake working together to hatch this plot to stop the assassination of President JFK. Now, this is my first novel by Stephen King. I have read Elevation by him, which is a short story or novella. I don't know what it's actually classified as, but this is my first novel by Stephen King. And I have to say, it was just as good as everybody says it was. I got recommended this book so many times, first by my husband and second by a bunch of other booktubers that we do the Reads with Friends live show over on Jacqueline's channel. Everyone was saying how amazing it is and so that made me motivated to finish it. I actually started this one way back in the beginning of March and it took me until the end of April to finish it. but. I loved every second of it. Stephen King just has a way with crafting characters that you really care about because this book is hefty. It's about 850 pages long and it spans over several, several years. And there are admittedly a few places in there where the action is dipping. There's not as much going on, but the characters themselves is are what really propels you forward and keep you reading. So this is an incredibly well done character study if you're looking for something like that. Now, that being said, the plot does move along really, really steadily all throughout the novel. I was really impressed by the way that he kept the action up and still kept it relevant to the overall story instead of going off on some tangent. It was just really, really beautifully done and you can tell that he took his time to do his research and craft a really well executed story. Would never expect anything less from Stephen King and will definitely be reading more from him in the future. Obviously, I gave this one a five out of five stars. The next book that I completed in the month of April was Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. Now this book has an incredibly complicated plot, but it follows our two main characters, twins Roger and Dodger, and Roger 
Roger is really, really talented with words. Dodger is really, really talented with numbers. And I'm just going to read you one line from the synopsis that pretty much sums up the vibe of this book. It says, Godhood is attainable. Pray it isn't attained. Now, I have read from Shauna McGuire in the past. I love her Wayward Children series, and I will continue to love it as those books are published. But this book, the synopsis is very, very vague on purpose. And when you first jump into the novel, you are put straight into the action. So this is a novel that if you need to know what's going on 100% of the time, you will not enjoy this. You would just have to accept that for the first little while, you're going to be lost. But once it all starts to kind of come together and make sense, it is beautifully done. This is definitely a ride with these two characters, Roger and Dodger. I will say one thing I really enjoyed about this is that there are a couple parts throughout the novel where it feels almost like a contemporary where the fantasy and sci-fi elements kind of take a back burner and you do get to focus in more on the characters themselves which I really really enjoyed but I felt like they still held their own up against those really high fantasy high action parts and it was just really well balanced in general. Shauna McGuire is an incredibly talented writer. This book has her signature writing style just like you would expect from the Wayward Children series even though this is a completely different experience than Wayward children. It was so good. But again, if you need to know everything that's going on all the time, you probably won't enjoy this. But if you are willing to give it 100 pages and just let it take you for a ride, this one was really, really good. One of giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And then I wound up reading my most anticipated release of the entire year. I got it as an ARC from Edelweiss. So thank you so much to Edelweiss and the author and publisher for providing me with a copy of Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. So this book follows our two main characters, Camino and Yahida, and they are sisters, but they do not know about each other. So Camino lives in the Dominican Republic and Yahida lives in New York. And they have two different mothers, but they share the same father. Their father spends his, the majority of his year in New York City and flies every single summer to the Dominican Republic to spend time over there. Well, at the beginning of the novel, these girls' father is on a plane going from New York to the Dominican Republic, and his plane winds up crashing and everyone on the plane passes away. So in the midst of this tragedy, the two girls obviously find out that their father has passed away and they find out about each other's existence and they come together in the midst of this terrible tragedy. Now, this was my most anticipated release of 2020. You guys know, if you've seen any one of my videos, you know that With the Fire on High by this same author is my favorite book of last year and my favorite book of all time. But this one, I was going in cautiously optimistic. With the Fire on High is written in a normal prose format, whereas Clap When You Land is written in verse. Now, Elizabeth Acevedo's first book, The Poet X, was also written in verse. I enjoyed it, but not as much as With the Fire on High. So my expectations were high for this one, but leveled. And I will say it completely blew me out of the water. I am so relieved and thankful and ecstatic that I enjoyed this book as much as I did. The one thing that I love about Elizabeth Acevedo's books is that you can just see her passion coming through in every single word. She takes her time to craft everything and you have to hang on every word but it is such a ride and it is so worth it to just take it all in it's beautifully beautifully done this is an incredible character study of these two strong young women i loved getting to learn about them both individually and as they come together and just i cannot say enough good things about this book or about elizabeth acevedo in general so this book is going to be publishing on may 5th which is tuesday if you're watching this in real time so if you are at all interested definitely go pick it up i so recommend this one i'm gonna be buying a hard copy for my shelf when it comes out obviously i gave it a five out of five stars I'm so thankful that this was as good as I wanted it to be. And the last book that I completed in the month of April was Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now, Elizabeth Gilbert is the author of Eat, Pray, Love, and this is a nonfiction piece essentially talking about creativity. The subtitle for this book is Creative Living Beyond Fear. So Elizabeth Gilbert basically goes into a little bit about herself. There's a tiny bit of memoir in here, but it is mostly about talking about being creative, how to be creative, why we feel like we might not be creative, how to get past that fear of being creative, everything that has to do with creating things she talks about in this book. 
Now I listened to this one on audiobook and it is narrated by Elizabeth Gilbert herself, which I really enjoyed. She just seemed really genuine and real about what she was talking about. And again, you can really see her passion coming through in this subject. And it was really interesting to get to hear these points from her. Now, this is a book that I don't know if everything about it will stick with me for years and years, but I definitely will retain kind of the vibe and the feeling of this. And I think that the thing that it most gives you is permission, that it's okay to be scared, it's okay to try something new, it's okay to mess up, and it's okay to do anything that has to do with being creative. Every part of the creative process is okay, and you deserve to do it just because you're a human being. So I thought that the overall feeling of this book was really uplifting and encouraging and hopeful. So if you are a creative person at all, or even if you think that you're not, this book might help you kind of tap into that part of your mind. Enjoy this one overall. I gave it a four out of five stars. So that is it for all the books that I actually completed in the month of April. And really quickly, I want to let you know about the two books that I'm in the middle of right now. Now, if you have been on my channel since the beginning of the year, you probably have noticed that I did not include a Harry Potter book in this month's wrap up. And that's because I did not finish Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I did let this one get away from me. It has about 700 pages, a little bit more than that. And I am on page 509. So I do still have a little bit more of this one to go. So I'm going to be attempting to finish this one up and then continue on to Order of the Phoenix throughout the month of May. And the other book that I'm in the middle of is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. Now I did pick up A Court of Thorns and Roses like you guys heard. Now in my April TBR video, the Court of Thorns and Roses series was the series that I picked out of my jar, which is why I continued on with it. And I just didn't get to finish it up for the end of the month, unfortunately. Right now, I think I'm about 40% of the way through it. I am very, very much enjoying it. So you will definitely be hearing me talk about that one soon. That is it for everything that I completed throughout the month of April. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know what your favorite book of April was. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to go down and give it a big thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye!